The Junk that samples of the Yang Zi, published in the 1940s. Junk is the name of the Chinese traditional boat or ship. The writer was the Englishman, Wester, who lived in China for 30 years at least and devoted himself to assisting in surveying, marking, and opening the Yangtze River to steam navigation to a point 1,450 miles from the sea since leaving the British Navy. Therefore, he was indeed an expert in the Yangtze River and the Chinese traditional sailing boat. Not only the small sandbanks, but the big ship, and finally, he wrote this book. I'm not a very big fan of ship culture or boat culture. When I accidentally found this book, I was very happy that there is a book that shares with the world those beautiful traditional boats. And there are also many pictures that give us easy understanding. I think the very important point is that every boat that was visited by himself. So I think this is a very precious book. Just like a time machine where we can learn the real size or shape or function of the junks running on the Yangtze River from the book. However, as a fan of the classical firearms, I was shocked that I was found a forgotten hunting gun in China, documented in this boat book. So in this video, let's talk about this old gun. First, let's see the shape of the gun, because the corresponding pictures are not enough, and this may be the only for picture that I found to document the guns of these hunters. So finally, I just decided to paint this picture according to the book. This gun actually was a big gun. As a reference, the very famous brown base musket with a bayonet has 1.8 meters to 1.9 meters. This kind of old Chinese hunting gun has around 1.8 meters, but it didn't have a bayonet. Plus, this gun had a shorter stock than the stock of a Bombay's musket, so we can imagine the length of this big gun. Therefore, we can call it the Gingo or Jingo. This word might be from the Hindi word Jango. The corresponding Chinese word may be Tai Qiang. By the way, Tai Qiang also is a kind of an iconic gun, not only used by old Chinese military, but also some old Western military. The iconic point in the old Qing Dynasty military, typically, it was operated by two soldiers. One soldier holding the barrel, and another soldier pulling the trigger to open fire. In my opinion, this gun might also be called Hianqi, Xianqiang. Last year, I also made a video to talk about it. According to the explanation in the Manchu language dictionary for Hianqi, Hianqi was a kind of a hunting gun with a longer body than the normal guns and around the tail part of Hianqi, where it was wide at the top, narrow at the bottom. I think this is make more correspond with the picture and the description of this old gun in the book. So overall, using the name Xianqiang, Tai Qiang to call this old gun. I think both may not run. In addition, there is another point worth mentioning that it's a trigger system. This is a kind of Chinese snap match lock and was designed on the right side, so it has a different working way from the snap match lock with the Japanese style and they usually use the an incense instead of the slow match. But it seems that the writer didn't give us a perfect structure on the picture, because this device drawing in the book simply could not work normally. So maybe I still need to continue study more. And we'll talk about some details of it in the firearms tag series videos. Then besides it, this old gun also was a kind of muscle loader, obviously. So this also meant that the gunner needed to use the black gunpowder, the beginning of which I believe many people are thinking is the black powder not a common powder? Yes, this is a kind of a common powder. But when we notice how to produce it, we will find that this gunpowder may be special. The book documented the bird hunters in Wu Hu. The gunpowder was made by themselves. After mixing the charcoal, sulfur, and potassium nitrate, they placed them in a pan 
over a low charcoal fire. Then they poured a jar of golden spirit, and they could get a kind of mixture with a paste look. The last step was that the paste must be laid in the sun to dry. Finally, they got their gunpowder. Every time, they took around 14 grams of a mixture as an ordinary charge for one shot. In the following chapter in the video, let's see how to reload this gun and how to use it. After loading the gunpowder charge, the wood hold the butt end and summon it on the ground, and then the powder run the waste a bamboo road until the charge occupied about 15 cm steps in the barrel. When the gunpowder was ready, they would load around 42.5 grams of the shot pellets, which were mixed by the coarse iron shot. In Chinese language, it may be called tie sha, and continued mixing by dried piece. I think maybe they didn't want to destroy the meat and the feathers of the birds, and meanwhile, they also were able to catch the birds, so they needed to mix some piece. Until this moment, they finally got a gun ready for open fire. By the way, every loading step mentioned was done on the shore in advance, but not on the boat. To be honest, the usage also is an interesting point. The common guns usually need to be taken up to operate, but this gun needed to be set on a boat, just like the picture showed us. Normally, there were two people driving the gun sambin. One man to control the boat, and another man to aim and operate the gun, which was placed on the boat. They drop the boat quietly to close the berth. Typically, the main aim was stuck, which flew from Amaroblas, Russia, because of their special bullets, and it's a very long barrel. The shot could hit the dock at a distance of 200 Chinese feet which was around 65 meters to 70 meters far, and the spread of shot was 1.8 meters soon after leaving the muscle. Meanwhile, for the huge spread, they could knock down at least 10 to 20 birds at a single discharge. Ideally, when the gunner of the big gun finished the shot, their other partners would come to fire another shot as wounded and dying birds, or those later in taking off with a smaller but a similar gun. But normally, the ideal chance might be God given and also want to open fire, whether he's dark or didn't hit. The ducks usually didn't return for 24 hours. So for the birds hunters, every day's business was just a one shot business. One shot might mean no harvest, no money a day, but also mean they could fill up the boat and earn more money. In addition, in the summer, the bird hunters would become fishmen, and this gun sandbank would be a normal sandbank as a fishing boat. Finally, in China, there still are some stories about World War II. Among them, there's a story that might be about this old gun. It's said that in World War II, some battles appeared around Baiyang Lake, also known as Lake Baiyang Dian in Hebei. In order to fight against the enemies, many hunters near the lake by Yang Dian, who might be also the bird hunters from an armed guerrillas. They could use their skill to hunt the bird and hide in the wilderness of reeds in the lake. And they used a kind of gun which was similar to the gun which we talked about in today's video. And also could shot the similar shot pellets to fight with the inventors. Because they always put a wild goat's feather on the muscle, so their guerrilla squad had the name Yan Ling Dui, Wild Goat's Feather Squad. Okay, this is the story about the old style hunting gun of the old Chinese bird hunters in Yangtze River. But until now, if you learned about the old style guns which were used to hunt birds, I believe you would have realized this Chinese gun really looked like a pentagon in Europe and America. So, if everything goes well, we will talk about this Western big gun in the next video. Okay, this is this video. Have a good day. See you next time. Bye.